Well, you know, because of today's smaller engines and larger alternators and cylinder deactivation technology, we have to have these decouplers on some of these alternators. So here to help us understand that today is Rob Lang from Lightens. And Rob, wow, thanks for being here with us today. Thanks a lot, Jim. Um, tell us about this technology and why we need it and how it works. Well, you know, going back a, a few decades, Jim, we had solid pulleys to drive the alternator. Um, you know, it did the job when, when that technology was, was definitely uh, in, in commonplace. Uh, then in the, the mid-90s, we moved along to the uh, overrunning alternator pulley or one-way clutch which is like a a bicycle uh, with a two-speed sprocket on the back so it'll freewheel in one direction and lock or drive in the other then uh, in the you know 2000 model year time frame uh, we uh, at Lightens come up with a, a device called the overrunning alternator decoupler and principally how that part is different is that it has a clutch inside of it as well as a torsion spring and the torsion spring is what is really fundamentally different between the overrunning alternator pulley and the decoupler. The alternator uh, is driven through the torsion spring uh, connected to a shaft and then uh, the clutch is connected to the pulley which transmits the, the power from the belt. So I would imagine then as uh, we, we get a, uh, a power stroke, right, so this helps to absorb that and then it free wheels to the next power stroke. Exactly. Uh, it it will, will drive through the, the spring sort of like a, a soft um, landing of the each time the engine fires so that the belt is, is calm. So how you would see that in the actual vehicle is uh, the tensioner will be very calm and, and smooth. The belts uh, will be also um, you know, very smooth and not fluttering, uh, which would happen if you had a solid pulley on the same, same vehicle that should have a decoupler. Well, great. That explains a lot. So, what kind of vehicles have these? Well, Jim, uh, you know, like this Corvette's behind us, this 2005, it would have the device on on it or the alternator pulley on it. You'll also find it on uh, late model Focus Fusions. Uh, the new line of GM pickup trucks that just came out last year also have the decoupler on the alternator, and uh, some of the uh, new domestics or import vehicles from Volkswagen, uh, Toyota, uh, Honda. They also have the uh, the part equipped. Wow, that's quite a list. So if you haven't seen these in your shop yet, you sure will. Uh, how long do these last? Well, Jim, they can last uh, 50, 60,000 miles on the low end uh, in severe duty applications, you know, such as very hot climates where you would run AC, uh, you know, quite a bit of the time, mm -hmm. as well as maybe uh, fleet operations. You know, we would see lower mileage on stuff like taxi cabs, uh, that type of thing. Or then on the higher end, over 100,000 miles on you know the tr traditional vehicle in in the uh, probably the mid states or or the upper states. Okay, great. Well, how do we repair one of these things when it breaks? Well, it's uh, if you want to bring that alternator over, Jim, it's uh, quite easy. You just insert a, a pick into the front of the uh, alternator and remove the cap, just like that. And then you would take a impact wrench. I notice you have a special tool. Where do we get that? Actually, Jim, the, uh, the tool is included in the box with advanced auto parts, so it's kind of unique to have the uh, tool included with this device. Very handy. Thank you. All right. So you would start by inserting the, the spline into the, into the alternator, grab the alternator pulley with your left hand, and just pulse it a couple times. <laughs> And the part will should come off quite easily. All and right. then you would install the new part simply by putting it on the shaft and rotating the part down until the spacer touches the, the front of the bearing in the alternator. Reverse the direction and pulse the alt the <coughs> wrench a few times and Remove the, the uh, adapter and you're, you're finished. Wow, that's great. It looks like Lightning has got everything that we need to make this a quick, easy, and efficient repair. Um, but is there anything else we need to think about when we undertake a project like this? 
Yeah, when you actually remove the pulley, Jim, it's a good idea to look at the, the shaft and make sure there's no damage to the threads, that uh, the threads are clean, maybe even brush the threads with a small, uh, small wire brush just to, to remove any, any buildup of, of corrosion on the threads. Uh, also, it's important to, um, to reset the decoupler device after it's been installed. So you put the tool back in and you take a 17-millimeter uh, wrench and rotate the shaft in the clockwise direction, uh, just a couple of revolutions. And that resets the, uh, the clutch inside of the, the decoupler so that uh, the function is, is confirmed. Well, that was easy. What's next? So now, Jim, you need to put the dust cap back onto the part. So you would put that on by you know, just snapping the, uh, the cap into the, uh, the front of the pulley. Kind of like a dust cover then, right? Yeah, exactly, Jim. The uh, purpose of the cap is to keep the contaminants from getting inside of the pulley, as well as keeping the lubricant, the grease, inside of the decoupler for its longevity in the, in the field. Wow, that's great. It looks like Lightens has provided just everything we need to make this a quick, easy, and profitable repair.